and we will move to questions to the Cabinet members and Chairman until the 45 minutes continuous period for questions and answers has ended. Councillor Randall. Question number 22. I'd like to thank the uh, Councillor for her question. Madam Mayor, before I answer it fully, can I apologise to you? Um, you asked earlier if we had any uh, personal matters before the Council tonight, and I've suddenly realised that under question two, although I'm not a granny, as is probably blatantly obvious, I, I do benefit from the, uh, the change in regime as far as the tax is concerned, uh, and I'm not in, under hardship as a result of it, but I do apologise for not mentioning the act at the time. Um, in answer to the Councillor's question, the total net income for 2010-11 was 1.849 million and the council estimated an increase of income of about 410,000 in 2011-12 based on the new charging policy therefore expecting total net income in the region of 2.259 million actual net income was 2.48 million which is uh, 250,000 more than was anticipated at the present time we're expecting the 2012-2013 total to be in the same region Councillor Randall. Thank you. Um, this um, amounts to an increase in income on charges of something between 20 and 25 per cent. And does the Cabinet member agree with me that this is a very poor way to target the most vulnerable people in Wandsworth as opposed to spreading the charges that the um, increased generation of income needs more fairly across all the residents of Wandsworth? I thank the councillor for her supplementary question. No, I don't agree with her, um, and I doubt she would expect me to. But having said that, uh, we are in a time of austerity, as has been already alluded to earlier this evening. Um, we need to ensure that um, the services which we provide, and we provide very good services in this borough, and I'll talk about that a bit more later. But uh, that said, the services we provide actually provide for the individuals who are most in need of them, and that there are certainly some people who can afford to pay a little bit extra uh, for the services that they require and at the same time because of the number of people who now have personalised budgets um, and self-directed support they can opt out if they choose to. Second supplementary, Madam Mayor. Um, does it show that uh, the council is managing to attract more customers for its um, excellent services, that when there's a market out there providing home helps, that perhaps our services are better than others? I would undoubtedly agree with the councillor that uh, our services are better than others and we provide an excellent service. We provide a service which is provided by staff who are at the time, present time working their socks off to provide a good service to all the people within the borough who actually need them. And that to some extent is indicated and uh, shown by uh, the teamwork that they're, they're providing which uh, allows me to report to the council that the level of sickness within the adult social services division is at the lowest it's been since Ms Warwick took over five years ago. Councillor McDermott. Thank you. Um, Question 23 of the Cabinet Member. I thank the Councillor for her question. The answer is yes, the Coalition Government does recognise the great importance of this draft social care bill. And in this context, uh, we welcome the opportunity to be involved in meaningful and extensive consultation with stakeholders. Uh, but I would um, add to say that uh, the Coalition shouldn't take too long. Um, we are at a time which has been decided uh, been uh, declared by one local authority in, on London on the slide of doom which uh, is not uh, a ride at Alton Towers but it is indication that if the um, amount spent on adult care combined with the amount spent by children's services on the care of children within their care by 2028 will totally absorb the whole of the council expenditure. <coughs> Thank you to the Cabinet Member for his answer, and um, I take your note on that. Um, but does he, does he agree with me that adult services and our health services here in Wandsworth are very well prepared to work together in integrated health and social care commissioning 
and we are um, we are working towards to get the best the best deal for our residents. I, I thank the councillor for her supplementary question, and yes, I do agree with her. Um, the um, the work that is being done by the health service, the joint commissioning unit, the, by the director of public health in, in conjunction with the director of adult care services, puts us in a very, very strong position. And as the chair of the health and wellbeing board for Wandsworth, I'm very pleased with the progress that's being made in that regard to ensure that the health and wellbeing of everybody in Wandsworth is to the forefront. And to some extent, I also welcome the statement made yesterday by the children's minister uh, concerning personalised budgets for children which may be extended to age 25 from the current 18 which if done properly will ease the transition from ch for children into adulthood. Councillor Thomas. Does the cabinet uh, member agree with me that uh, he's uh, been a bit over generous uh, to the coalition in letting him off the hook for their complete failure in uh, the Queen's speech to tackle uh, the real elephant in the room here, which is the slide of doom uh, that he's uh, so aptly uh, described uh, just now. Uh, does he share my uh, bemusement about the uh, government's uh, complete uh, failure to respond to the proposals of the Deal Not Commission uh, that uh, have commanded such widespread uh, cross-party uh, support? Uh, and what representations is he actually making to central government to stand up for the residents of Wandsworth on this issue? I thank the councillor and I uh, would like to take this opportunity to, to, uh, to welcome him to be the uh, principal speaker on the Adult Care Services Overview and Scrutiny Committee. And um, I'm not in doubt that the coalition will get the right answer, but I think it's at this stage it's, it's vitally right to get it right. If it's not right, if they rush into it, then the opportunities will be lost. We need to get it right and this uh, approach at the moment is right. They will um, receive appropriate um, comments from me if it drags on too long. Elsa Belton. I thank Councillor Belton for his question. Um, this is a very complex um, matter, Councillor Belton and uh, fellow members of Wandsworth Council. And I think it probably beholds me to explain it a bit more than the eight-line answer which is on the, uh, uh, the answer on the, on the paper. Um, and so you will excuse me if I uh, take the opportunity to explain it in a bit more. There will, might be questions asked of members at the end to make sure that they understand it. Um, this measure is an average quality of life score based on responses to the adult social care survey. It is a composite measure using responses to survey questions covering the eight domains identified in the survey um, report. Those are control, dignity, personal care, food, food and nutrition, safety, occupation, social participation and accommodation. And the relevant questions are these. Which of the following statements best describes how you control, how much control you have over your daily life? So by control over daily life, we mean having the choice to do things or have things done for you as you like and when you want. And then there's a tick box, tick box with four options which go from I have as much control over my daily life as I want down to I have no control over my daily life. And the next question relates to thinking about keeping clean and presentable in appearance which of the following statements best describes your situation? And again, there's a tick box with four answers. Thinking about the food and drink you get, which of the following statements best describes your situation? And again, there are four tick boxes there. And which of the following statements best describes how clean and comfortable your home is? And again, there's an opportunity. My home is as clean and comfortable as I want, and my home is not at all clean and comfortable. And which of the following statements, again, describes how safe you feel? And again, I feel as safe as I want and I don't feel safe at all. And carry on at the, the, the range of questions through to the last question, which, um, which of these statements best describes how the way you are helped and treated makes you think and feel about yourself? So the answers vary from the way I'm helped and treated makes me think 
and feel better about myself through to the way I'm helped and treated completely undermines the way I think about myself. So those eight questions were sent out as part of a survey to all the, uh, the people who are part of the adult care services and receive packages and then each of the questions were, aren't, were um, scored. And they're scored on a number of um, various factors and then by some complicated measure, measure devised by a statistician at the Department of Health, it comes up with various things that basically if, you're, if your needs are not being met, you get naught. If your needs are being met and you have no unmet needs, you get through, through to three. Which, when all taken together with this, shows that the, in fact the maximum score is 24. Eight questions with a maximum, if you get it, if you're uh, happy with everything in your life, it comes up to 24. Well, as you can see from the, uh, the report, um, our target in 2011-2012 was 18.7. Um, and actu the actual figure we reached in Wandsworth was 18.9, which puts us third in the level of uh, throughout London, uh, where the maximum score scored by any local authority in the country was 19.1. So does that answer your question, Councillor Bell? Councillor Bell. Just ask to put on the mic, please, Councillor Belton make a very brief point of order comment. I think an answer as long as that um, should either be written uh, with the, the member concerned saying I provided the answer in writing for the, or uh, written out on the paper. I don't know whether it's Mr. Martin trying to save money, but the end result is we're going to get fewer questions. But thank you for it all the same. Can I just say, uh, can I ask, um, you say strongly here, um, it is not a percentage third or fourth sentence. Um, it's not a percentage but a point score. Uh, I'm more than happy to accept that. The fact of the matter is that in the committee paper, it, and I've got it here for Councillor Madden if he hadn't seen it, it actually says 18.7 percent or at least that funny thing that I've always thought was called a percentage. So that's what we got uh, in the committee and I would think the terrible trio uh, who I usually mean as uh, Councillor Maxwell, Scott, Moritz and uh, Grimston sit all together, you know, just... I, I would think the terrible trio were more critical of this paper than we could manage, um, very critical indeed about the methodology. Can I ask you on behalf of that committee and the leader and the executive to make sure that this targets paper is more sense uh, it, because it really is a bit hodgepodge and if you want advice on how to be critical about it I've pointed to the terrible career. Councillor Madden. Uh, whether that was a supplementary question or not I'm not sure but uh, so, so, I, I certainly take on board your comments and I will ensure that it is um, written in such a way that is understandable to everybody and nobody gets bamboozled. Next question, Councillor Walsh. Thank you, uh, Madam Mayor. And um, the question is to the uh, Cabinet Member for adult, social, uh, adult Care and Health. And I shall appreciate it if he wants to be as detailed as he likes. I thank the Councillor for his question. Um, as it shows here, um, out of a total number of 134 service users with a learning disability between the ages of 18 and 25, there are 112 in settled accommodation and seven in paid employment. And uh, the council will continue to work to improve those ratios. There are a number of proposals on stream at the moment to um, find accommodation, uh, supervised accommodation for people with learning difficulties so that they can be absorbed into the community. Um, the council commissions employment support for service for people with disabilities including those with high functioning autism um, and some local specialist learning disability services are looking to employ more people with learning disability 
for example, the travel support service managed by Southside Partnership and by Hale, and the council has a job carving schemes for a small number of people with local difficulties, uh, disabilities. I would like to say, Madam Mayor, that uh, this afternoon I learned that Thrive, who is a very, which is a very powerful um, community-based project based in Battersea Park, which many of us will be aware of, announced a sponsorship deal with Joe Malone. Now I'm told that Joe Malone is a perfume company. Um, I don't know that from my own personal experience. Part of the Estee Lauder group. Um, they've agreed to sponsor Thrive to the tune of £92,000 over two years, which will give valuable support to their programme to help disabled people get jobs in gardening and horticulture, and I think this is to be highly recommended. Councillor Walsh? Supplementary. Um, that was actually going to be my um, supplementary question about... Uh, <laughs> But, but uh, no, it's good news. And I, I think uh, wearing another hat, I've seen that uh, outdoor work, which this would be, would be greatly beneficial to people with disabilities who often thrive. Uh, can I just ask you then, generally, is there further scope, do you think, for more improvement? I thank Councillor Walsh for his supplementary question. There, is, there always is uh, room for improvement, but um, the statistics, I'm afraid, have to be taken as they are. Uh, and we do as, try as hard as we can to get people with learning difficulties into uh, employment. Um, and the, the number is, is fairly low by virtue of the fact that it is taken as a percentage of the number of people who uh, take a service from us, not necessarily from the number of people with actual learning difficulties in the borough who are not known to the department, but who are in employment. And I was told on... Monday, that there are some local authorities, in order to massage their figures, they walk around, visit all the employers in, the, in, the, uh, in their area, and say, do you employ anybody with a learning disability? Um, and if they do, they add them to their figures, which creates, and I'm not in the habit of um, massaging figures, and I'm sure that the uh, head of audit wouldn't let me if I tried, and I'm absolutely certain that the Director of Finance wouldn't let me either. So we are doing everything we can to encourage employers to have more employees with learning difficulties working for them, but we're working from a very low base. Um, and it is, in fact, the number of people who receive a service from us, who are t how the, the figure is calculated, and not necessarily the number of people within the borough who have suffered from learning difficulties. Councillor Thomas. Question 26 to the Cabinet Member. I thank Councillor Thomas for his question. Um, the answers are very much here um, in, the, in the answer. Constructive work is being undertaken over recent months to progress, and it is progressing well. A uh, paper will be presented to the June Overview and Scrutiny Committee, um, updating on the design and implement of of the Joint Commissioning Unit to be established from this autumn. The service areas referred to in the question from Council Thomas will be a constituent part of the Joint Commissioning Unit which will align existing commissioning capacity from adult social services, the National Health Service, public health with constructive involvement from the Children's Services Department. Uh, can I thank the uh, Councillor at uh, the Cabinet Member, um, firstly for his uh, welcome to me uh, earlier, uh, secondly for the uh, constructive uh, answer. I'm sure he agrees with me that it's very important to ensure that the structural changes uh, um, uh, don't uh, result in any disruption to the process of uh, service planning. Can I very simply ask uh, what he's going to do to ensure that uh, service users are involved from the outset uh, in those discussions that uh, he's just described? Well, part, part of the major part of the, uh, um, the work that's being undertaken is being undertaken by the Clinical Commissioning Group and the service users through LINK um, as are involved in that at a, a high level and uh, we will be consulting generally to ensure through the Better Services, Better Value programme which is currently being uh, undertaken 
throughout the whole of the southwest area to ensure that the public's perception is taken on board. Um, and it, I think it's worth saying a couple of things. One is that the uh, clinical commissioning group um, in Wandsworth is at such a, a stage now that they have been deemed by the Department of Health to be in a position to move forward to the next stage of their program, which is only one, one of only three local authorities in London and one of only 35 in the country. And it's, um, I think it's to, they're to be commended for the work they've already done on this particular aspect. Um, and we will be working very closely to ensure through the, the organs that already exist, whether it's uh, um, LINK or any of the other patient forums, to ensure that the patient's view is taken into account. Second supplementary. So done. You've got it. Um, would the Cabinet member agree with me that the, um, the Health Committee, as it then was, now obviously incorporated into adult care, has in fact an incredibly good track record of joint working, and that some of the work done by that committee has in fact produced some really excellent results. If you look at um, the um, hospital-acquired infections at St George's Hospital, it really was the pressure that that committee put on St George's that has in large part helped them to put the focus on reducing those hospital-acquired infections by a dramatic amount. I think they reduced by something like 82% um, after we started that campaign. And if you look at things like MMR... Can we have a question, please, Councillor yes. Duncan? Okay. MMR, that was also another campaign which we really pushed for. And I think that sort of joint working stands us in really good stead. So as a precursor, would the Cabinet member agree with me that we're probably in a good position to push for this good work here? I thank Councillor Dunn for her question, and yes, I would agree entirely. I think the, the work that's being done in this borough on a number of levels is of the highest quality. The work that we're doing with St George's, with the work we're doing with the Mental Health Trust, um, and the incorporation of the Public Health Department into the Council has been a phenomenal success. And I'd like to take this opportunity just to comment on part of a, an answer to a, a question further down uh, the list, um, which says that when the Department of Health recently reviewed a number of public health transition plans, Wandsworth was the only one in London to be rated green. And I think that's a great reflection on the progress that's been made. Supplementary? No, we've had the supplementary. Oh. <laughs> uh, the time for questions is now over.